This is Colin Selleck of Binghamton University. This video lecture is on the kinetic equations of motion translation. It's from chapters 17.2 to 17.3 of the book Dynamics by R.C. Hibbler. Today's objectives, you will be able to apply the three equations of motion for a rigid body in planar motion, and you will be able to analyze problems involving translational motion. Activities include some applications, free body diagram of rigid bodies, the equations of motion for rigid bodies, translational motion, and we'll do some problem solving. Here we see a boat on a trailer. They both undergo rector linear motion. That means they translate but do not rotate. In order to find the reactions at the trailer wheels and the acceleration of the boat, we need to draw the free body diagram and kinetic diagram for the boat and trailer. So here's the free body diagram of the boat and trailer you have reaction forces at each of the wheels. Now there may be a single front wheel and a dual rear wheel. So you could also write this as 2ND and that would be the reaction force at each of the wheels in the back. The weight vector is always applied at the center of gravity. And here's the kinetic diagram. It shows that the center of gravity is accelerating with some acceleration A sub G. And this vector you see is the mass times acceleration vector and it's located at a perpendicular distance D away from the point B. Here's a tractor raising some cargo. The cargo will undergo curvilinear translation if the forks do not rotate. If the load is raised too quickly, will the crate slide to the left, the right? How fast can we raise the load before the crate will slide? Well, the equations of motion for planar bridge bodies can be applied to solve these problems. So let's talk about the planar kinetic equations of motion. We will limit our study of planar kinetics to rigid bodies that are symmetric with respect to a fixed reference plane. And as discussed in chapter 16, when a body is subjected to general plane motion, it undergoes a combination of translation and rotation. So the first thing to do is set up a coordinate system with its origin at an arbitrary point P. So here we see the point P and the two axes, X and Y. The X and Y axes should not rotate but can either be fixed or translate with a constant velocity. So as you can see in this rigid body in blue here, we have some external forces and some applied moments or couples. And you may ask, where do those come from? Well, if you have a motor, it can supply a pure torque. Or if you're using a screwdriver, you're applying a torque to the screwdriver. And note that the weight vector it's always placed at the center of gravity. Now, G is a special point. It is denoted as the center of gravity for the rigid body. And in general, it undergoes some rotation, angular velocity, omega, and some angular acceleration, alpha. Now, omega and alpha are vectors as well, and they're in the k direction. As well as these applied moments you see, m1 and m2, those are also in the k-direction. So we can apply Newton's equations of motions in both the x and y direction. Now this is similar to what we did for a particle. So we can say the summation of forces in the x direction is equal to the mass of the body times acceleration of the mass center in the x direction. And likewise, summation of forces in the y is equal to the mass of the body times acceleration of the mass center in the y direction. So the sum of all the external forces acting on the body is equal to the body's mass times acceleration of its mass center. And here you see the kinetic diagram for that same rigid body. It was showing the mass times acceleration of the mass center in the y direction of the vector, and likewise for the x direction. So far, we've going to discuss translational motion. I want to touch on rotational motion right now. Here in blue, you see a rigid body, and it has these externally applied forces and externally applied moments acting on it. And then there's the mass times acceleration due to gravity located at the mass center. Well, we know already that the summation of moments about the mass center is equal to mass moment of inertia about the mass center times alpha. Sometimes it's easier to sum moments about a point other than the mass center. In that case, I highly recommend you use the vector form of the equation to do that. So I'll write it out for you. Summation of moments about some arbitrary point P is equal to the mass moment of inertia about G times alpha. 
plus R of G with respect to P cross with the mass times the acceleration of the mass center. The book tends to break up this last term you see here and try to figure out what the signs are, and it, it's very confusing to me. If you use the vector form of the equation when you're summing moments, you never have to worry about the signs being correct. Thus, we can use three independent scalar equations of motion when trying to describe the general planar motion of a rigid body. And these equations are summation of forces in the x-direction is equal to the mass times the acceleration of the mass center in the x-direction. Summation of forces in the y-direction is equal to the mass times the acceleration of the mass center in the y-direction. And the summation of moments about the mass center is equal to the mass moment of inertia times alpha. Now, when a rigid body undergoes only translation, all of the particles of the body have the same acceleration, so the acceleration of the mass center is equal to the acceleration of the body, and the angular acceleration is zero. So in the case of translation, acceleration of the mass center is the acceleration of the body, and angular acceleration is zero. So those three equations you just saw then reduced to summation of forces in the x is equal to the mass times acceleration of the mass center in the x, Summation of forces in the y is equal to mass times acceleration of the mass center in the y. And since alpha is zero, the summation of moments about the mass center is equal to zero. Now, if the problem is constructed such that it's easier to perhaps sum moments about point A, for instance, which is not the mass center, you can replace the last equation with the summation of moments about the point A is equal to the total mass times the acceleration of the mass center times the distance d, which you see here. d is the perpendicular distance between the point a and the vector mass times acceleration of mass. Now when the body is, undergoes curvilinear linear translation, which you can see at the top here, uh, now this body is moving in a curve, but it still is not rotating. It's more convenient to use normal and tangential components of acceleration, and you can see those axes drawn here. So in this case, as you may suspect, the summation of forces in the normal direction is equal to the mass and the acceleration of the mass center in the normal direction. The summation of forces in the tangential direction is equal to mass times acceleration of the mass center in the tangential direction. And since we're undergoing pure translation, there's no angular acceleration. The summation of moments about the mass center is equal to zero. Or again, if you want to sum moments about another point B, as you see here, then you can write the summation of moments about the point B is equal to the distance E, which you see here, times this vector you see here, so it's times mass times the acceleration of the mass in the tangential direction, plus this vector you see here, the distance H from B, so plus H times the mass times the acceleration of the mass center in the normal direction. So let's establish a procedure for analysis. First, as always, establish an XY, or normal tangential inertial coordinate system and specify the sense and direction of the acceleration of the mass center A sub G. Draw a free body diagram and kinetic diagram showing all the external forces, couples, and the inertial forces and couples. Identify the unknowns and apply the three equations of motion, one set or the other. So this is for X and Y and this is for normal and tangential. Remember, friction forces always act on the body opposing the motion of the body. So you're going to have to assume a direction of the motion, and that will give you the direction of the frictional forces. And if they come out negative, it just means you assume them in the wrong direction. So let's do an example. Here we have a cart, and its total load is 100 kilograms, and its center of mass is located at this point G. A force of P is equal to 100 newtons is applied to the handle. Neglect the mass of the wheels. Find the normal reactions at each of the two wheels at A and B. So our plan is to follow the procedure for analysis that you just saw. So here's the free body diagram. It showed the reaction forces at each of the wheels. We showed the weight, which is the mass times acceleration due to gravity, applied at the mass center, and we show the externally applied force. This is the kinetic diagram here, and this vector is the mass times acceleration in the x direction of the mass center. This is undergoing translation only the x direction so acceleration of the mass center in the y direction for this problem is zero.
So let's apply the equation of motion in the x direction. Summation of forces in the x is equal to the mass times acceleration of the mass center in the x direction. The only force in the x direction is the x component of the applied 100 Newton load. So that's 100 times 4 fifths. That's the component in the x direction. That equals total mass, which we're told is 100 kilograms, times acceleration of the mass center in the x direction. So we can solve for the acceleration of the mass center in the x direction. It's 0.8 meters per second squared. Now we'll move on and we'll apply the equations of motion in the y direction. So summation of forces in the y direction. Now in this case, it's equal to zero because the acceleration of the mass center in the y direction is zero. So I can write that nB plus nA minus the weight, which is 981 newtons, minus the y component of the applied load, which is minus 900 times 3 fifths. That equals zero. So from this, we can write that nB plus nA is equal to 1041 newtons. So now, let's sum a moment about the mass center. And that's going to be equal to zero because the angular acceleration is zero. So first I'll do n sub a. You need to get the signs correct when you're summing moments. So n sub a is the distance 0.6 away from g and is giving a counterclockwise moment, and that's positive. So it's 0.6 times n a. Now n b, for similar reasons, is giving a negative moment, so it's minus 0.4 in this case times n sub b. Now we need to get the applied moment from the applied force. I'm going to break up the applied 100 Newton force into x and y components. So there'll be a component in this direction and a component in this direction. So first we'll take you know, the 100 Newton in the x direction. That's going to apply a negative moment about the point G. And it's located a distance. We need this distance right here, which is 1.2 minus 0.5. So this will be minus 100 four fifths, that's the x component, times the distance 1.2 minus 0.5. And last is the moment due to the y component of the applied force. And that's given a clockwise moment, so that's plus 100 times 3 fifths, that's the y component, times this distance right here, which is 0.3 plus 0.4, so 0 0.3 plus 0 0.4. So this reduces to 0 0.6 in sub a minus 0.4 into b is equal to 14 newton meters. Now you can use the previous equation that we got from summing forces in the y direction it was n sub a plus n sub b is equal to 1041. We did that earlier. You can solve these two simultaneously. n sub a is 430 newtons and n sub b is 611 newtons. This lift truck has a mass of 70 kilograms and a mass center located at this point G. It lifts a 120 kilogram spool with an acceleration of 3 meters per second squared. The spool's mass center is located at the center there, the point C. Uh, neglect the mass of the movable arm CD. Find the normal reactions at each of the four wheels. So first let's sum moments. I'm going to sum moments about the point B and that'll eliminate one of the unknowns from our equation. So let's do that. So let's write down the equation first. Summation of moments about the point B is equal to the mass molar inertia about G times alpha plus R of G with respect to B cross the mass times acceleration of the mass center. Now in this case, I have a composite body and the only thing accelerating is the spool and there's no angular acceleration so I can rewrite this equation as summation of moments about B is equal to now alpha is zero so this term is zero now this term right here I need to take into account the fact that the spool is accelerating upwards at three meters per second squared so that equation becomes R of C with respect to B cross the mass of the spool times acceleration of the spool, which is acceleration of point C. So first I'll sum the moments. So the moment due to the weight of the cart is this weight right here. And it's a counterclockwise moment, so it's positive. So it's 70 times 9.81 times 
times 0.5. Now the moment due to the spool weight is also positive, so it's plus. The mass of the spool, 120 times 9.81 times the distance between the center of the spool and point B, which is 0.7. Now I'll do the reaction force at A, and that is a clockwise moment, so it's negative, so it's minus 2 n sub A times the distance between A and B, which is 1.25. That equals to the vector RC with respect to B. Now, I don't know all of this vector. I don't know this distance right here, but it turns out I don't need it. But I'll show you how this works. So I'm just going to call that distance M. So the vector R of C with respect to B is going to be equal to minus 0.7 in the I, right? This vector right here. A plus this unknown number M, which is in the J direction. I'm going to cross that with the mass of the spool, which is 120, times acceleration of the spool, which is 3j meters per second squared. So you can see in this cross product, j, this mj cross this term right here. j cross j is 0. So we don't need to know m, it turns out. So let's do this cross product. So i cross j is k. We have a minus 0.7. So this is minus 0.7 times 120 times 3. That's in the k direction. All the moments that we did on this side are also in the k direction. So I can solve this equation for n sub a and get 568 newtons. So let's write down that result so we're going to remember n sub a is equal to 568 newtons. Now we'll sum forces in the y direction and set that equal to the mass times acceleration to the mass center in the y direction. So in the right direction we have 2NA plus 2NB minus 120 times 9.81 minus 70 times 9.81 that equals mass which is 120 times acceleration the mass center which is 3 meters per second squared. So from this we get 2NA plus 2NB is equal to 2224 newtons. Since you know MA is 568, we can solve for MB, and that is 544 newtons. This concludes 17.2 through 17.3, kinetic equations of motion for translation. Next up, chapter 17.4, kinetic equations of motion for rotation about a fixed axis.